Ecoman Race for the Cure and WTOL 11 as we celebrate, embrace the fight, and unite for a cure. Good morning, and thanks for staying with us for this year's Race for the Cure. It is a special virtual race day, but survivors in this community would not let a year go by without celebrating each other, and that is what we're going to be doing for the next 30 minutes or so. I'm Melissa Andrews. Well, this year's virtual race doesn't allow us to be physically together, but with technology, we can see one another and share our race experiences. We also continue to fight breast cancer. I went on a walk to find out how the fight became more important than ever. This year's Race for the Cure looks nothing like this. Coronavirus took our crowds and our hugs, but not our will to fight. This year we're walking on our own or socially distanced, but we're still moving one foot in front of the other toward a cure. Hi, Mary. My walk took me to Komen Northwest Ohio's executive director, Mary Westfall, who says we have to keep moving forward. Talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that the organization has experienced in the last six months or so. Well, certainly like all businesses and all organizations, the pandemic has really changed the way we do our business and our fundraising is primarily done through the Race for the Cure. And we do know that this year, as we've gone virtual, we'll see some different numbers in that Race for the Cure, but we still have a lot of people have registered. People are walking in their neighborhoods and they're walking or running at home. So all of that is good, but definitely we are seeing a shift in our numbers. And, but our work is still very important and our breast cancer survivors are still very much in need of our services. Nothing has changed on that front. And in fact, our breast cancer survivors may have greater need right now because they're losing their jobs, they're losing their insurance, there are less resources available in the community. So now more than ever, it's important to line up and support Komen and support the good work we do locally and the good work we do in research to help find the cures for breast cancer. Mary tells me 16 to 20,000 people might be in this sea of pink any given year, but only half of those register and pay the fee, which goes toward research, mammograms, direct care, and awareness. It is important for people to realize that that $30 registration fee is another way that offers direct support to funding our important programs. So when people register and pay their $30 registration fee, when they ask their friends to support them through fundraising, and when they actually just make a personal self donation, those things make a difference. One of the things that concerns me most as I walk is how much survivors are empowered by the race every year. Seeing fellow survivors, getting a shot of support, and celebrating their victory. It just brings so much hope. Gretchen Awad is positive survivors and metastatic survivors are still feeling connected. What are you guys doing now that everything has to be virtual to continue reaching out to those groups? Sure, we are doing wonderful things with our survivor community and engaging our community that's living with metastatic or stage four breast cancer. She tells me many participated in the spirit weeks leading up to the race and are excited about incorporating a virtual component even after the pandemic. I think we've had a really, really positive um, feedback from those who are enjoying the virtual and we will always recognize that those living with breast cancer and um, metastatic living with metastatic have compromised immune systems so while we are excited to get back to hopefully in-person race for the cure next year I don't think we will ever step away from having a virtual component and making sure that people can engage with Komen Northwest Ohio however they are comfortable I also wanted to know how Komen, which is such a resource for survivors, will continue to be there with a greater need and fewer dollars to give. What is going to be the path forward, do you think, for Komen out of this? Well, I think that that remains to be seen, right? I do think that Komen will continue to have a very important local presence, and I think that we will see some shift in the way that we do business, and I think that we are always going to stay committed to delivering direct service and saving lives in that fight against breast cancer. And that's a fight that will continue until there's no longer a need for a race for a cure. For WTOL 11, I'm Melissa Andrews. And that is why we're all here so that one day, hopefully we don't even need a race for the cure because we have a cure for breast cancer. If you've been on the fence about donating to Komen Northwest Ohio, this might help make your decision. 
The Taylor Automotive Group is going to be matching your donations that you make today up to $2,500. It's their way of helping this worthy cause at a time where we know money is tight. Toledo is a giving community. Toledo is a caring community. Toledo is a community with a, with a heart. They really do care about its folks. And uh, I think this is a way for us to express that at Taylor. And I think it shows other businesses and other people that, hey, Taylor's doing that. Maybe we can get involved and make a difference. These uh, healthcare partners who. And you can make your donation right now. Just call the number on your screen, 419 724 2873. Susan G. Komen, Northwest Ohio representatives are standing by ready to take your call. Well, did you know men can get breast cancer too? It is the message two local women want to spread after the death of their father. As the Susan G. Komen Foundation continues investing more into research for men with breast cancer, this year's Toledo Race for the Cure is in memory of Dennis Crippen. Here's Amanda Fay. Dad would always joke because his carburetor would always go out you know, on his <laughs> super glide. Yeah. The first thing sisters Kelly Crippen and Denise Smith will tell you about their father, Dennis. Funny. He was funny. He, he was a joker. And it was that joking spirit Kelly and Denise say their father, Dennis Crippen, carried with him the seven years he fought breast cancer, a disease that was nearly unheard of in men when he was diagnosed in 1996. 1% 1 of men diagnosed in 96. When he died in 2003, it was up to 6% of men. Dennis says the cancer was first caught because Dennis noticed he had an inverted nipple and then pain. He waited six months to get it checked out. He had a mastectomy, radiation, chemo, and all of these treatments designed for women, something Dennis joked about. All the medications and, and stuff that he was taking for chemo that had never been tested on men. So he would come home and tell me that, you know, um, his periods were going to be late. Um, he shouldn't try to get pregnant while on this medication, um, shouldn't breastfeed. Dennis was in remission for four years. Then a tumor was found in his neck. The cancer had spread to his prostate, kidneys, and bones. Dennis died in 2003, just weeks before his 53rd birthday. I miss him every day. Um, I have a 10-year-old son who will never know his grandfather. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. Kelly and Denise got matching tattoos to honor their father, a man who worked on the railroad and liked to ride his motorcycle. It's something Kelly learned to do for him. There's a freedom being on the motorcycle that I can understand why he loved it. His daughters say while Dennis was funny and a biker, he was also shy and private. They joked he might be a little mad at them for nominating him for the Race for the Cures in memory of designation. But they want him to know this. I would tell him that I, would, that I nominated him because I was proud of him of how he handled everything. Kelly and Denise also want to raise awareness about breast cancer in men. In 2020, Susan G. Komen estimates there will be more than 2,600 new diagnoses and 520 deaths. But men get breast cancer too. We learn the hard way as a family. Denise says there have been advances since her dad's passing, and she and her family will continue to support Komen's mission to fund more research and find a cure. They do have their own mammogram machine now. They're coming out with their own breast cancer ribbon. I'm hoping they'll do more testing on the chemo drugs they use. Um, because like I said, my dad, he, did, he didn't know. May you ride free. At goosebumps. <laughs> May you ride free. Um, you will be missed. And so that was engraved on his headstone. Very, very important story to tell for the men out there. One final check in right now with the team from National Beef. More than 200 people joining forces here to support and help fund the fight against breast cancer. Thank you so, so much to the team from National B for being the largest team in both Toledo and Finley races this year. We'll be right back with much more. Chrissy Bobissi, where are you? 
Hello! Oh, I'm so jealous you have coffee, and I, I knew you were gonna wear that boa. <laughs> Just sipping on my coffee here. Okay, let me get rid of this chat. What do you got, Sorry. another chat going on? Are you gonna stand? Yeah, I'm standing. I got my shirt on. You, you look good. Got my boat on. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your lighting's really good too. Do you have one of those ring lights? Yeah, you do. I do have a ring, but I'm not using it. I have another light. It's called a loom cube. Uh huh. They're much better than ring because oh. they just um, suction to the back of your um, computer and they're like this big. Oh. It's like a, it's almost like the size, it's a little smaller than a cell phone. It's almost like a credit card. And it's incredible. It's like 50 bucks online. Oh, so I use it for Yeah, everything. your lighting's really good. <laughs> when, I, when I need two lights, I usually do the um, ring light too. And the house is looking or all done I... in the background too. What'd you say? The house is looking good in the background too. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you can't see the dirt. <laughs> Hopefully Tom doesn't walk by in his underwear. I, well, <laughs> he's under threat of death. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a sec. Okay. Well, my spirits have already been lifted this morning. Just checked in with Chris Peterson, and it's not an understatement to say she has been one of the driving forces behind the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure here in Toledo since it began, and the pandemic has not put a damper on that. So we'll say good morning to Chris, who's in her big morning. pink boa, which I think, Chris, I was hoping you were going to wear this because I think it provides a little bit of comfort to people to see you looking like you always do on race day and know that this is just for one year. Look, we are just saying that this is a one year thing. We're keeping our fingers crossed that we are all back to normal next year. Um, and so we are trying to celebrate in whatever way we can. You've seen a lot of the teams that have done their virtual walks at different times. Some people today are getting up and walking. I actually am taking two walks today with two different groups who are doing their Race for the Cure uh, walks today. So I know that people are excited about it and still know that this cause is really important, which gives me a lot of hope. And of course, I'm wearing the pink bow. I took it down to Finley yesterday and walked my race down in Finley yesterday and got a lot of uh, car honks and waves and people saying, are you Chris Peterson? Yes, I am. We're walking the race for the cure. So it's been a lot of fun um, just trying to make lemonade out of lemons. Well, I think you and the race for the cure go hand in hand when people think of Coleman here in Northwest Ohio. I mean, 25 years, you have to have this truly in your heart. What really in the beginning of all this brought you into Coleman and had you stay there all this time later? When I was uh, working in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, before I came to Toledo, I actually was involved with the Race for the Cure there. So I knew what a wonderful event it was, and they were just bringing it to town as I arrived. So it was just kind of um, a no-brainer that I would get involved here again. And at the time, I only knew one person in my life, my best friend growing up, Julie. Her mom had had breast cancer and um, had survived for many years. And eventually it metastasized and um, she passed away. And so that was her experience. And I saw my friend Julie as a young woman. She's never been married uh, because she, her mom and dad had been foster kids and she promised her mom that she would take care of these young kids that her mom and dad had adopted um, after she died. So she has sacrificed her life because of her mom's death. And since then, so you see how it affects families. And since then I have met so many wonderful friends um, who through this journey who have survived breast cancer. And I've also lost several very close friends. And that impacts you in a way that you really just wanna carry on the fight 
and keep their passion and um, their life in mind as you are moving forward and just trying to find this cure. I know we are close. And every year at the Race for the Cure, with your help, uh, we are able to inch closer to that cure. Big things are happening in research and treatment, and we're going to make it in the very near future. Chris, thanks so much for checking in with us today. It, uh, it would not be race day without seeing you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for your support. And do call in 724-CURE, 419-724-CURE, because they're taking your money, and your money gets doubled this morning as you make a donation. So thanks. And, Mel, thanks for everything that you're doing and the TV station, too, obviously. All right, Chris, good luck on those walks today. Well, one of the most emotional moments of every race for the cure is the Survivor Parade. Hundreds of fighters and survivors leading the festivities off leading as examples as they celebrate their fight against breast cancer. This year, the parade is going to look a little different. This is the virtual Survivor Parade, sponsored by Mercy Health.
This year's Race for the Cure is in celebration of Cheryl Wingate, as Tim Miller shows us she already knew cancer too well before it knocked on her door. This was a celebration, not the big race for the cure that we're used to seeing in downtown Toledo, but Cheryl Wingate's own personal race for the cure. Cheryl and a couple dozen family members and friends gathered at Wildwood Metro Park on September 13th before the virtual race for the cure because Cheryl is having reconstructive surgery just before the virtual race because of a heartbreaking diagnosis in 2018. Cheryl found a lump while in the shower. She then had a mammogram and biopsy. Then I had a PET scan and it confirmed that I had invasive, poorly inductal carcinoma, triple negative. It was devastating because the first thing I thought was 16 kids. And how do you leave 16 kids? My life is mowing. You heard that right. She and her husband, Paul, became foster parents in 1998, keeping their home filled with love. Kids just kept coming in and leaving and coming in and then not leaving. Um, we ended up adopting 13. We have three biologicals. Cheryl describes her home as organized chaos. No peace and quiet, but a lot of support. I guess they don't get tired when you're five, right? Support she would need for the big fight ahead. Never in a million years, never. I'm never sick, I'm always healthy. I mean, I have asthma, but it's under control. So this was a total shock. Cheryl then went through treatments, 26 rounds of chemotherapy. I was done with that in March, and then I immediately went into 30 rounds of radiation. Um, I finished that August 26th, the day the kids went back to school last year. She's a huge supporter of Washington local schools and has two kids at Jackman Elementary, one at the junior high and four at the high school. It was her family on top of the treatments that pushed her through. Cheryl beat her cancer and has been cancer free since September of last year. But her fight is also for family members and to find a cure, not just for breast cancer, but all kinds of this devastating disease. I lost my five-year-old niece in 2012 of brain cancer. I lost my 20-some nephew of cancer. I lost my uncle of cancer. And just this August 26th, I lost my 31-year-old daughter-in-law to cervical cancer. And Cheryl pushes on. She's honored that the Toledo Race for the Cure is in celebration of her and her courageous battle, but she admits it's bittersweet. It is an honor and saddened at the same time. It's hard to be happy and celebrate when she just passed, you know, on the 26th. So, but I'm glad. I'm glad I get this chance to, to show what I have. Um, I'm glad I'm cancer free. I wish this on nobody. Tim Miller, WTOL 11. All right, and we have our arms around you as well this morning. Cheryl, all the best to you. We'll be right back with the dates for next year's Races for the Cure.
<laughs> that is Artina. She is very, very special to me. We uh, did a story with her, and the race was in celebration of Artina uh, last year. And this year, you can see she's hitting the road for her own virtual race. And we know while this year has to be different, next year, we hope to be with you again in person in downtown Toledo and Finley, September 25th and September 26th. Thanks for watching.